Good afternoon, Instagram. So today we are bringing on uh, Anissa Guayardo, which is kind of like the old Akon song. Could you see me creeping in the shadow? Today we're bringing on Anissa Guayardo. So that was my singing for the day. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime. Okay. So, good news before we go live with Anissa. Like, good news is that the next challenge. Oh, pop. There you go with the uh, ringlet. The next challenge is going to start. Uh, a week on Monday and it is a two week mental training challenge and it's going to be massive with Pepe Galvan Pepe works with all the biggest players in Mexico Hola Anissa como estas? Yes, you did it. That was easy. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Hey, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo has pasado el día? ¿Cómo está tu you vida? Know, you know, the, the only problem I have with, with Spanish is that there's no pause between any word. It's just one long sentence. Well, that's if you're like, well, it depends where you go. Like, I lived in the Dominican Republic. And I never see I give no like that. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like more chill. So Anisa, how are you playing in Mexico? How am I? Yeah. I'm so intrigued by your story. Let's start at the beginning. Introduce oh. yourself. Did you did did you hear my Akon song? No, how did I miss the Akon song? Why is Riley talking smack in the comments? I did, did you know that? Because we're creeping in the shadow. On my Instagram, we got Anissa Guayado. Can I at least say the last name right? I thought, did, did, it, did it rhyme? Go on, tell me. You could say Guajardo. No, Guajardo. It sounds better with the song. Uh oh. You know? Yeah. Guayado. Do you, have you, you clearly, you've not um, mastered the ring light yet. The what? The ring light. You don't know what the ring light is? Are you on TikTok? What's TikTok? I oh, mean... Anissa, we got so much to teach you. Okay. Is... I told you I don't do technology. I... This is as far as I've gone in. Hey, well done. Well done on Instagram Live. Proud of you. Proud of you. All right, so Anissa, first of all, welcome. And Anissa, you're the best player of Pumas. Can't wait for it to get But Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. it, clearly, people don't know how this goes because I'm like, I make fun of people. That's what I do. Okay, Anissa, so. Um, you play for Pumas. Um, tell us about why like, you, because you live in Fresno, correct? Or you're from Fresno? Now I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, brilliant. That was well played. Um, tell us, tell us about growing up. Because like, I am actually like, I'll make it funny, but I'm actually really interested in your story because it seems really cool, right? Because you, 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 I did my research. You went to Pepperdine. What a horrible view that school's got. Ugh, disgusting. Right? Um, so tell us about growing up and what role soccer played in your life. Okay. Um, so born in Fresno. But at the age of six, moved with my family to El Salvador. And then we spent two years there and then moved to the um, to Mexico, to Guadalajara. 
and then to the Dominican Republic. Who um, Chivas, by the way, sorry. I was the big Chivas, we were big Chivas fans back, back in the day. Um, and then we ended up back in California, but in Palo Alto um, before coming back to Fresno. So obviously growing up, soccer was not just like a hobby, but it was embedded in the culture of all those countries. Um, it would have been kind of like a sin if I didn't even participate. Um, but it came, it became much more than that. So, uh, and then Mex and then Fresno, it has a huge um, Latino population and a really great soccer culture here. And so it's just in my blood. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know about the soccer culture in Fresno. Yeah, man, it's we good. had our professional team until it decided not to be you, a thing. You know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know much about Fresno. I don't. Is it is it near Bakersfield? Uh, it's like geographically, if you look at all of California, sure, we're close to Bakersfield. Are we Bakersfield? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> you're, in, you're in LA. You should like take a trip to Fresno because why right. not? No one. Those words have never been muttered. Let's take That's a trip to Fresno. No one's ever said that. We were the gateway to the C uh, to the Sierras, and what did I tell you about people hating on Fresno? You don't like it, not one I, bit. I'll not do it. Not one bit. You don't like it. I'll stop. I'm not hating on it. I'm just. I don't believe those words have ever been muttered. That's all. Well, you should take a gander. You know, it's funny. Funny because we have a player. She's in the comments now, Zoe. She drives down to train with the, uh, Manu from Baseball Soccer from Fresno. Okay. Yeah, that's commitment right there. Yeah. So you grew up in Fresno and you went to Pepperdine, which is a big deal. How did, how did, you, how did, you, did that all happen? Um, honestly, like most of my life, it was uh, like a fortunate occurrence that I, was, I feel so grateful for. Uh, shout out to Twyla Kaufman, who at the time was my assistant coach. She's, she's currently a... Um, assistant coach at the Houston Dash. Yeah, it's while at Dash, and she's with the national team as well, aren't she? But she's con constantly working within the national team. Um, but she was my assistant coach at the time, and she either saw a video or came to one of my tournaments, and she just saw something in me, man, that quite honestly, a lot of other people hadn't seen. So, um, just yeah, uh, very grateful to her and the whole program for taking a chance on me. So let me ask you this. Um, growing up, you obviously wanted to play college and everything. Now, with all the players that I work with, like a lot of them have a similar thing where they weren't necessarily the star on their team growing up. Some of them were, but they were the player who made it from their team. Um, Ali Riley is one of them. Um, you know, not necessarily the superstar, but being a pro for, I don't want to say how many years because I feel yeah. old. But how was that with you? I've always said if you're able to experience um, challenges at a younger age, you're really going to set yourself up to, to really succeed in the future. For instance, my challenge was that when I came back, back to California after all my years sod, um, I was still kicking with my toe by the time these club kids have been playing for over 10 years already. So in my, in my situation, I had to work harder than everybody else to just not even be better than them, but to get on their level. Um, yeah. And from that... And I really enjoyed it. So that um, really pushed me and motiva motivated me to work harder to get to that level and then to even move past some of my teammates in a span of like a year. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? Like at what actual hard work can do. Like when you put your mind to it and the, the gains that you see, like one of the kids, we just did like a 30 day accountability challenge. And one of the kids said, put a video up on uh, Twitter, just showing from March to May the same drill. And it, it's faster, it's tighter, it's cleaner. And that's in like a month and a little bit. Amazing. Good for that player because a lot right. of us 
like I've done that drill on to the next. But yeah. that's amazing. That's really awesome. It's but you know, it's a testament to you, right? So you you committed for that time period to, to chase it and you did it. Um see sometimes I'm nice to people. That was nice. Hey, I'm waiting for something else like to work off of. I am an angel, trust me. I don't know. I think this all stems because we had Sofia Huerta on and uh, and I called her Judas because she left Mexico to pay for the US. And people don't understand, like, I've known, I've known so for, like, years and years and years. I can make that joke. But then everyone's like, oh, you're mean. I'm like, well, yeah, but it was, it was the thing that needed to be said, mm. you know? So let me ask you this. You graduate college, then what happens? Because everybody has a choice, right? You can either graduate and go the conventional route of getting a job. Sure and questioning your happiness for the rest of your life. Or you could throw down the gauntlet and chase your dreams. What did you do? Oh, I, there was no choice for me. I, I, don't, I just never, ever remember um, second-guessing the thought of playing professional soccer. So it, it was just never occurred to me in my head, like, something else could happen. Like, that could not be an option. For some reason, it just never occurred to me and I think what I always say is stubborn hearts will put the universe on your side and um and I 100% believe that's what happened um so you so. you got drafted at a college correct correct so that was the first year the the league came oh back. let me ask you about Pally Blues super old who did you play for, at Pal- for with Pally Blues Pally Blues yeah Tudela Oh, you were there that year. Here, the Charlie was Charlie in the first year, and then what? Jacob. Okay, who was on that team with Charlie? Oh, don't make me remember names. I'm so bad with names. Wow. What year was that? <laughs> don't make me remember dates either. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got you. You're fine. Let's move past that. 2011, 2012 summer. And then it had to be because I graduated in 2013. That's funny because I remember that year with Tadella um, because a guy, an acquaintance of mine, said he had the job. And I called Charlie and I'm like, are you employing this guy? He's like, no. And then Jacob, and he, Jacob's a good guy, right? So it was like good to see him get the job. And I was like, it's so weird. Um, I told Zergo to ans- ask questions in... English. Do you have a, you haven't met Zerdo yet, have you? Not in person. Oh, you have to. You've got to train with Zerdo. Like Zerdo is like legit legend. Like I make I make fun of of Zerdo a lot because we're like we're friends, but as a player, like ridiculous, absolutely right. ridiculous, like crazy. Anyway, I believe he's asking, what is your opinion on? the women's league in Mexico. Just going to just gonna throw it right out there, huh? Um, hey, listen, I'm just more impressed that I can actually translate that. Yeah, are you sure you translated well? Should we go back and make sure that your translation was... Anisa, listen, this is how this works. I'm the one who throws jibes, all right? You're not... It's not the other way around. Got it. Okay. Thank you. No. All right. So we won't get there yet, but we will. So you got drafted by the Boston Breakers, correct? Yeah. Who was the coach then? Lisa Cole? That's the one. You're welcome. Um, what happened there? Um, so that was the year they were doing allocations. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember that, but yeah. Canada and the U.S. Had, um, got to automatically allocate seven players to the league. And the coaches basically didn't get – to choose which players they got they just had they got an equal assortment of all of us so it was a very odd strategy they had in place um yeah first year of the nwsl it was unorganized it was chaotic um i would probably leave it at that so it just didn't work out right it was so what, I'm, what I want people to get from this, 
is that doors are slammed in faces all the time, right? right? And usually it is one person's opinion, right? So whether it was Lisa or I have, I don't know who was her assistant then. One person's opinion. And so many players are like, well, that's it then. Right, that's it. I should, I should not play for this team or I should not play for it at this level. This coach says I'm not good enough. But apparently you're a bulldozer. So what happened after Boston? Did you go to Houston after Boston or did you go somewhere else and then to Houston? I did go to Houston. I did. So you, uh, but only as a trialist, right? Trialist, correct, correct. And that and was with Randy. Randy. Randy Waldron. Yeah, I haven't thought about this stuff in a while. Uh, yeah, so I did that because I just I uh, wasn't – I mean, I had plenty of teammates on, uh, on Boston that decided to quit. Like you said, the doors were slammed. There was a lot of rookies on that team. Um, we weren't giving, getting opportunities that we thought that maybe we – you know, maybe not so much should be given, but we thought we had deserved. And so at least half of the rookies had quit that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pretty sure that was the same across the league. Um, so then Houston and, you know, things didn't really pan out there. Didn't work out in Houston, right? So, again, two in a row, most people are going to quit. Yeah. However, Anissa continues. Where does your journey take you next? From there, I was trying to get as far away from my experiences as possible, so I ended up in Australia. Australia, mate. Um, and who did you play for in Australia? Uh, Melbourne City. And how was that? Uh, we ended up winning the national uh, title that year. Um, great group exceptional team like outstanding players some of the best in the world so that was really an experience i'm gonna ask you a question hey. who was on that team okay yes yeah. you got some well i mean the internationals you had um fishlock jean b jen bd um fishlock B, myself um and little um kim little oh uh australian national team players just like the best of the best caliber rebecca stop from uh new zealand um so the cat lee the it was just an assortment of players that yeah how good is kim little by the way she was phenomenal yeah she's fun to watch she's different isn't it she's different gravy so How did you end up in Iceland? Okay, where are we? Uh, Uh, You're in Fresno. I'm in Los Angeles. In Fresno, physically, in my mind, we are in Australia. Um, Iceland was after... So after Australia, I had a a, a go in Spain. Okay. For who? Uh, With... Levante in Valencia. Is that on Wikipedia? Absolutely not, because it technically is. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my mom runs the Wikipedia page and she didn't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that was a bust. And then that's when I ended up in Iceland. And Iceland always fascinates me because they produce players, men's and women's. And it's so small. It's probably smaller than Fresno. No, but and go on. Hang on. Siri, what is the population of Iceland? Siri, what's the population of Fresno? 2019, the population of Iceland. What have you got? No. What? What's your number? 364,000. All right, so you're a numbers guy. That's fine. Yes. But is, isn't it? But isn't it amazing that they produce players? Yeah, oh, 100, men and women. Yeah. And, and CrossFitters. If oh, I know the young daughter, like, that, that girl, that girl would absolutely 
beat me to death. Oh, that's without a... If she, anyways, we'll move on. Well, uh, let, well calm down. Calm down. I bet I could beat her in some things. Well, but... Hamilton from the ring thing. No, I, I could I could beat her in like eating chips and stuff. She would still any literally anything you put in front of her, she was just like ram to the victory line. Bet I could beat her on the Peloton. I hear that's your thing. Uh, I beat Stu Holden the first time I haven't been in since. But I've always got that first time. So <laughs> listen. <laughs> You you go from Iceland to Sweden. Yes. And then from Sweden to Sierra de Mexico. Sí, eso es. Exactly. So tell me how you ended up in or at Pumas, at Unam, um, and then we'll get into that a little bit because. I'm kind of, I'm kind of obsessed with the Mexican league. Um, so we'll let you talk about it. So you had a Pumas jersey, pretty sweet. Well, mi amigo, mi amigo Jordi Morales is a jugador de Pumas, see? Eh? And, and you when I went there, like, last year, I didn't have a choice. I was in Mexico City. My friend was headlining Corona Capital, you know? And we had to get a jersey. I'm going to get an America jersey because that would... Well, America be your... sucks, so, you know. I can't, no, because I live with Zerdo's brother and he played for Pumas as well, so I couldn't do that. I'd get, I'd get cut at night. Um, you got what? Ugh. Sorry. You good? So tell me about Pumas um, and... How you how you ended up there? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Have you got an agent, or did you find this by yourself? Like, what happened? Um, so I did have help. Um, I did after Sweden. I um, found myself a new agent. I had one previously who had done wonders for me, but he specializes mostly in Europe. And at that point, I knew I was ready to come home. Um, um, and so I. I heard from a friend, a really good friend, who's, who was also playing in Mexico. She had this agent, so he picked me up. And um, then the search was on. And what I was really looking for in a team was just somebody that would, um, that really fit my style. And obviously, you know, just somebody that I thought we would mesh well because a team doesn't want a player that's, doesn't see like into their philosophy and a player wouldn't be what's your what's your style um i love keeping the ball i love the constantly switching moving the defense in order to get them into a place to attack with space like in behind and um just playing quickly one or two touch um but mostly like the possession game i think is okay that's, that's good to hear um, carry on, carry on about Pumas. So you, you so got, you get there. You that you've you've bought into their philosophy, right? You got me thinking about soccer, and now I'm all sad. <laughs> lo, lo siento. Like, hey, imagine being me. I haven't trained anyone for like two months, three months. Yeah. Oh. So you idea. buy in. You buy into their philosophy. They buy into you. Um, now, tell us about the Mexican league. Um, it's really growing. Uh, there's a lot of potential. It's it's doing really well. Granted, um, it's in its first few years still, so there is work to be done, and they know it, and they're progressing towards that. You know, the final stages. Um, what we're seeing is still a lot, a lot of young players, which in Europe you'll see that too. Like that is the fundamentals, the basics for a really good team is that they still have young players, and you yeah. know to to grow them essentially. Um, but what, what they're missing in Mexico and what is, it's obvious they're missing is like the veteran players, you know, the older that have been around for a while. Sure, there's been players that have been there since the beginning of the league, but it's only like four years old, five years old, you know? So how veteran can they be? Um, but 
the young ones are the future of this league. So, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole point of this league is to build for the national team, right? And it's mainly an under-23 league at the beginning. When they started it, it was a U-23 league. And only Mexicans could be in it at the beginning, right? Now, and I, again, I might be wrong. Um, I believe it's three overage and Mexican-Americans can be on it. Is that right? If so, yes. Um, which I believe is their stage of growth for this, for this league. Um, one of my friends helps run the Fed in Mexico. So this is, but this is going back to when I was in CDMX with him and he was telling me like the plans a bit. And I think, I think what the world has been most impressed about is the rivalry games where people show up. Right. And I think, over here, like we, they can't quite wrap their head around 53,000 people showing up for, um, for a Liga Max Feminine game. And I keep saying that this is what happens when you have history, right? So in Mexico, if America are playing Pumas, America are playing Pumas. Doesn't matter if it's women, kids, right? So there's that like rivalry. Whereas here, we're not quite there yet. Like, obviously, we have Portland, who is a phenomenal fan base, right? But everyone tries to mimic it, but you can't mimic it because it's just Portland. It's just the way they are in Portland. They're a bit weird. They're like me, right? So what would, what, what was, what's been your most exciting... I'm going to get onto the fun questions now. What, what would be... What's your most exciting moment in, in a Pumas jersey so far? Um, it has to be, without a doubt, the, the, the day I made my debut. Um, you know, it was... I had been there already for maybe a week... And I was starting to feel at home. I was starting to feel very comfortable. But the second that they called my name and I took my foot first step on the field and the fans just gave me the warmest welcome that I've, I've yet received like in my whole career. Um, it, it was just truly something special and something I really, I just never felt like I had that in the past. Mm. You know? And it could be because I only like in my whole career had maybe 50 people in the fans and then that first game there was at least 2000 like that could maybe be a difference but i just felt very at home was did you make your debut in mexico city yes does it help living in the best city in the world certainly is something special yeah. have all of that all the cities in the world but <laughs> no mexico city's up there it's so it's dope Right, yeah. it is, it's ridiculous. Okay, are you ready for some fun questions? I think. That was my fault. That was my fault because I banged on the table. Look. Pistolero. There's no one at the door, it's me. I apologize. My dog speaks Spanish. Oh, that's. Yeah. Pistolero, aquí. Ah, muy bien. Siéntate. Tu eres. Mi mejor amigo. Did he sit? Uh, I, if I've got food to bribe him to sit, yeah, it was it. Um, okay, so uh, best player you've ever played against? Uh, best player I've ever played. You know what? I was super impressed with uh, Sinclair. Christine Sinclair. Well, they- than one of the Olympic qualifiers. Okay. Someone wants but to know if you've met Hugo Sanchez. Not in person. Okay. Well, I guess what, not. what, just online? Like, we, we like, <laughs> match. <laughs> we, like, slipped into your DMs, like what? Harmony, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Okay. So, Christine Sinclair, great choice. Great brain. Right? Just yeah. Plus, the way that they responded to her, her team, uh, the first somebody that doesn't remember, Gaka, 
Like, I remember that. I know what caca means. So put a mm -hmm. little bit, little emoji if anybody mm. is. Yeah. Um, okay. Best player you've ever played with? Come on, man. I'm, I'm running through the teams right now. Pressure's on. Um, I don't know. I, was, I think Little's up there. It's got to be Kim Little. If you've played with Kim Little, man, come on. The answer? I think I'll stick with that answer. I Final think, answer. I think it's a crying shame that Kim is Scottish. And that's with no disrespect to Scottish people because my granddad was Scottish. But what I mean by that is that she'll never be like... She won't ever be able to blossom on the world stage properly as she should do. Do you know what I mean? If she was American or English, she would... You know, everyone would be um, in love with Kim Little because she's a magician. Got my way out of that. Got my way out of that one with the Scottish contingent, didn't I? Woo! Granddad was from Aberdeen. If anybody's got any problems with it, never had a clue what he was saying because of his accent. Um, okay, Anissa, you are going to pick a five-a-side team of players that you've played with. Um, oh, ah. What was that? You're right. Hoping you would ask me about something else. What would you like me to ask you about? A five side te team with any players in the world. You know what? You're funny. Go for it. Has All right, you okay? How about this? You pick oh, a five side five. team, and I pick a five side team. Pick my males. It could be anything. Okay. Who's your goalkeeper? Peter Check. Oh, okay, I'll have Peter Schmeichel. Okay. John Terry in the back. Wait, what's my formation? Three, two. Wait, oh, it counts as goalkeeper. Okay, so you've got John Terry in the back. Okay. I'll take Gilberto. Hugo. Uh, on the right, I'm going to have Rachel Daly because we got banned from futsal, so I know she likes to fight people. Okay, that's a good choice. I like Steph. On the on the left, I'm gonna have uh, Messi. Although I do feel like you'd be a little bit of a ball hog in time aside. It's one of those things where you want people that'll play with people. But also, I want to win, so Messi's in. Good luck with that. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Uh, and who's your left? Come on. Uh, Bale. Oh I God. need a runner. I am so smashing bits out of you. This is crazy. And up front, up front, I've got Maradona. And my substitute is Brazilian Ronaldo. Thank you very much. Game over. Wait, you say before that, I didn't hear you. I was thinking about Bale's abs. I said, my, my team's going to smash your team to bits. Oh, Hazard. I didn't, did I mention Hazard? Oh, my gosh. You can have him. No, I think you pick Eden Hazard and I pick Diego Maradona. What do you think is going to work here? I've got we, Ronaldo nine on the bench. I think we have a team. I think a, a like a collective whole. I think something magical, or it's going to be an absolute disaster. It's and a I'm disaster. It was odds. You know, I've got uh, I've got Maradona and Messi. Came over. Okay, um, Anissa, what is the one? Peace. Actually, let me ask this. Guys, if you've got any questions, put them in the comment box below and we'll get to them right after this next question. Anissa, if you could give a young player any piece of advice, what would it be? These are the real fun questions. Yes, I know. <laughs> Oh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just laughing at myself. One piece of advice. It's a piece of advice that I would be, uh, I should still listen to, and that's always advocate for yourself and be your biggest fan before anybody else. 
that is fantastic. And I, you know, I say that, you know what, it's funny you say that because when it, whenever I'm play, I'm training players and this goes from like, from Alex and, and Mewis and Rach and all of them and all the way down to, to youth players, everyone's heavy on themselves, right? You, you miss, a, miss a shot in training and then they shout their own name and they're getting pissy. But when they score a banger, they don't pat themselves on the back. It's not like, oh, ooh, that was good. It's like, no, oh, that's normal. But as soon as they make a mistake, they hammer themselves. And it's so annoying. So that was fantastic advice. I'm going to put that. When I repost this tonight on YouTube, that's going to be on it. Okay, this is a very, very, very important question. Pregunta muy importante. Oh, you said in Spanish, so I know you're serious. Ah. Uh, What's your favorite flavor ice cream? Oh, how to choose, how to choose. Um, I would have to go with a, a mint chocolate chip cookie dough. And that's a thing. I've never had that. What brand is that? I can't remember. Anisa, there's a question in Spanish and I can't find it out there. Salute, dice Pennsylvania. Espero verte campeón con mis libros Pumas muy pronto. Yo también, amigo. Gracias. Anissa, your, your opinion on the Estadio Olimpico Universitario. You can answer that? Is that, that was it? That was a question, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it, yeah. Yep, okay. Um, my opinion on it, it's, first of all, huge. You saw it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever go inside? Um, no. Because so we, were, like, we were just Corona Capital in it. Of course. Don't say the Corona word during these times. I know, right? But Zerdo's parents live right next to the stadium. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And then you go inside and there's a track with, well, it must have been eight, at least eight lanes and then the field's in the middle of it. So it's, it's interesting because the fans aren't so close to the field, but it's not so far that you feel un, like unattached to them. But um, well, the good thing about that is that Pumas have been social distancing for over a hundred years. Look at this. Look at Manu getting in it. America all the way. Get out of town. How did it feel to get the 2015 Women's World Cup call? Oh, yeah. That was dope. I was okay, in, is, I that was... The, is that your official answer? Yeah, that was dope. The quote. Uh, I remember that. I got a call when I was in Australia. And they were like, hey can you come in like two days? Cause there was an injury. So I wasn't initially, I wasn't initially on the list. And then I was like, deuces, I'm going to Australia. So then I went to Australia and then two weeks later they called and said, somebody got hurt. We need you here in two days. So I hopped on a plane after finally getting my jet lag under control and then got to Canada. Um, and we got smashed. You played like, England now. Uh, I'm sure and oh where was it because I went I went to a Mexico game because I've seen Rene's parents and I see I, I was at a Mexico game I'm pretty sure it was England Mexico like, I could be wrong um, yeah that sounds right England yeah and like Costa Rica or something yeah um, have, have you got what are you okay we're, we're going to move on so the very last question, what are your goals moving forward? Do you want the cookie cutter answer? Nah, son, we like it real. Real, right? Yeah. I want to be happy and continuously happy and happy with myself in the work I do. So how can you not get a better answer than that? Right? Like, all, yeah. all realistic, man. Yeah. It's like, um, you're happy in Mexico City? I am. Um, 
you know, there are ups and downs as in everything, but it, it's all a matter of perspective. And I have, I make the decision to be happy. That's my choice. And so, yes. There was an English, an Irish boy band called Boy Zone. And they sang a song called Roller Coaster. And it said, Life is like a roller coaster. You've just got to ride it because it goes up and down. Right. Right. Um, so where, where can people find you on Instagram? What is your app? Oh, she doesn't even know. This is brilliant. You've been the best person I've interviewed. <laughs> I don't know. I think you just like search my name and it will come up. I don't know. I have a life coach named Amy. If you have any questions, you can direct it to my friend who runs my life. Man, they just told me to show up and I show up. You told me to show up. Here I am. Oh, someone's put it in. Oh, Anissa, Anissa, don't say Guado. She'll get right annoyed, even though it goes in with the Akon song. Oh. Look at how long this hair is. Oh, that's a that combination. Is, Real good and well. That is called quarantine right there. Um, okay. Anissa, thank you so much for coming on. Um, when you get back to Mexico City, you've got to go out and train with Zerdo. Um you, have, you actually might know his wife. I do. Oh, Rana, right? Um, what? Huh? Your name? Rana. The wife. Rana. Mariana. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we call her Rana. Yeah, hey, that's why I didn't know that. I was like, frog, no. Yeah, Rana. Um, she's awesome, obviously. Uh, but you should get out and train with Zerdo, and we'll get you some beast mode soccer gear. Or get down here. After this quarantine's over, drive down with Zoe. Zoe always drives down. Bloody quarantine. I'm so over it. Like, right. for, you know, everything that's good, but... Listen, I don't even like people, and I'm, like, missing talking to people in the street. I don't even like people. You don't like people? No. Nah. Yet, yeah, your business is essentially centered around people but. yeah but this is the thing about my business right and it's it, this whole corona situation has been like a real tipping point for, for me and what i see i'm only used to being surrounded by people who push each other to be amazing right like by like legit like people who are excellent at everything they do and you know, that doesn't mean they're, like, super wealthy. doesn't, you know, mean anything like that. But, but they put 100% into everything. And that's all that I've been surrounded with from the ages of eight. Like, I've got kids who are, like, eight or nine. And they go for it, right? Because I'm not, like, a, I'm not Mr. Motivator. I'm not going, yeah, come on, let's go. If you don't want to work hard, that's your, that's your fault. So... Being, like, dealing with a few different types of people now in quarantine, I'm amazed at uh, the lack of drive in people. I didn't know it existed. And, yes. you know, I'm, it's definitely given me a new vantage point of how lucky I am, you know, to be surrounded by these people. Um, and it's given me a new appreciation of what we, we always called it the 10%. And because 10% of the people will actually go out and do it. And man, let me tell you, some people have blown my mind with laziness. I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. But what you can do is do the best you can and hopefully your work and what you put out there can be an inspiration for somebody to also do their best. Hey, question for you. Have you ever met Pepe Galvan? No. Oh, mate. So, not this Monday, but the following Monday, we're going to start a new challenge. Two, I haven't come up with a name yet, but two weeks to mental toughness. Boom, there you go, just come up with a name. Two oh. weeks to mental toughness. So, Pepe works with um, a bunch of the, we worked with the Federation in Mexico, um, works with a bunch of MLS teams, a bunch of colleges, a bunch of players in Europe, and it's all brain work. So, 
everybody should jump in on it because it is going to be next level. I spoke to him today and I was inspired after a five minute WhatsApp call. And it's funny, right? <laughs> Pepe's Juan. Pepe, ¿dónde eres? Ciudad de México o Puebla? Puebla. He's from Puebla, right? But his mum's English and she must be like posh English. Because when Pepe talks to me in English, he's very well spoken and he kind of talks like James Blunt, like very posh. And I'm just like, this guy is not Mexican. His accent is way too strong when he's English, like, talking English. It's too, it's too thick. It's brilliant. But you should join in. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, you, I, I want to get you back of, on. This was fun. See the date again? Uh, I don't know dates. It, it, a, a week on Monday. Night. <laughs> 20, 20, 20, 25th? A week from Monday. A week from Monday. Yeah. Boom, 25th. Mm. Okay. I'm good at that. Time again, please. Uh, prob I've got to confirm it with Pepe, but probably 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes, I will post something to sign up. Um, we've, I spoke to Pepe today. We're going to get a little landing page together because um, we're going to get a PDF. And just listening to Pepe, it's going to be a bunch of audio, audio stuff. So it's going to be awesome that you guys can take away with you um, because obviously confidence doesn't just happen. You've got to train it like you train your technique. Anissa, thank you so much for coming on. I want to get you back on soon because you inspired me. Um, thank you for coming on. You've been awesome. Thank you. This is no, a blast. thank you. No, no, please. Gracias. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Anissa, we're going to get you back on soon. You've been brilliant. Thank you so much. Get you. Take Stay it well easy. And help. Thank you, and you. How do I get out of this? I got you. Okay, guys, so how cool was that, right? Phenomenal story from Anissa. Um, so we are going to take a break for a couple of days. But so you heard then on the 25th, we start the next challenge. But we are getting a couple of college coaches on uh, for next week i've got a bunch of people who want to come on so we're going to get players we're going to get um college coaches so but i will let you know um, and i'll keep posting content to the instagram as well thank you for showing up